Welcome to Music and Booze with Mo. I'm Mo Herms, and I've worked in the music industry most of my life, so have met some pretty amazing musicians over the years. I also love a good cocktail, and I've encountered some really interesting bartenders as well. It seems that there is a lot of crossover, so when I can, I like to talk to musicians and bartenders about music and booze. Join us at the bar, won't you? Music and Booze with Mo is brought to you in part by The Blind Rabbit, a speakeasy located in the Anaheim Packing District. The Blind Rabbit has twice been given Best Mixology Awards by the OC Register, as well as several nominations for their innovative cocktail program. For more info and to make reservations... Oh, it's going already. <laughs> there. Let's wait till the blender goes. Um, all right. We're talking about music and booze. Sure, music and booze. Introduce this. yourself, darling. Uh, my name is William Pineapple. I work over at uh, Holiday Cocktail Lounge in St. Marks and First in New York City. And you also have a background in uh, trailer happiness. In I do, too. I do. Yeah, I worked there on and off for about three and a half years, and then uh, I was GM there for about a year just after Sly bought it, mm -hmm. um, and that was, I think, Sly bought it about five years ago. Mm -hmm. And then you came out to the... What brought you to the States? Um, I mean, I wanted to be a bartender at 14, uh, and so <laughs> I started... Well, you're Australian, so when can you I start am, doing such a thing? We can start at 18. At 18. It's pretty strict. Okay. But uh, then I started researching bartenders and finding out what the best places were to work, and uh, there was literally London at that point, uh, or New York, so I decided I wanted to move to New York. Um, I finally got the opportunity uh, when I was about 30, 31, so I went through the visa process, got it approved, and moved. And that was New York, not London. You were already that was New York. That was I was New living York. in London. Now. You've been living in London, and how long? Uh, how long have you been bartending then? Since uh, you were eighteen. What day is it? <laughs> is, your, is your birthday soon? Uh, it is actually. Yeah, oh, it's August sixth. Wait, so. we did talk about this. So yeah, so I mean. So today is July twenty third so of two thousand seventeen. It was like August fourteenth or something. Uh, two thousand two. I started bartending. So that really. Was probably, uh, Almost 15 years. How? That is like a calling. It is. I mean, how did in, you know that? In 15 years, I've spent nine months not bartending. Wow. And those nine months, I was in charge of an airport. You were what? I was in charge of an airport. <laughs> in charge of an airport? Yeah, on, uh, on Doug Island off uh, Mission Beach in Far North Queensland. So, um,. I, I was in I'm, charge of... I'm completely confused by this. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, let me ask you this. So when you were in charge of the airport, were you um, taking a break from bartending? What, what, um, what made you leave bartending for a moment? Because I know I sometimes living... people think maybe this isn't their calling and they try something else. It was nothing like that. Okay. It was, I <laughs> was, was it a living... girl? <laughs> uh, I was living on a tropical island. Um, okay. My contract was for three months. Mm -hmm. uh, it started December 1st and ended, actually it was only for two months, it ended at the end of uh, January. Mm -hmm. um, and I ended up staying for 18 months. Wow. I met a girl like uh. a few days after I got there. We were together for six years after that. Oh, and wow. Engaged, and she, I moved, after that island, I moved out. That's when I moved to Dublin. Um, and then Belfast, and then finally when I got to London, she moved out. So we were together for two years, apart for two years, and then together, together for two again. years in London, and then she decided to move back to Australia. Wow. Wow. All right, then. That makes sense now. <laughs> so explain to me how, how you, so you always knew that you wanted to be a bartender? Yeah, always. What? I can't, I, I, I'm really jealous that you always knew that, because <laughs> for most of us, we're trying to figure out what kind of things we like, how do we focus on that. It evolves into something else. So, were you a little boy, like, making fake cocktails for your friends? I mean... No, nothing like that. It was, so, uh, how, how was it that you were even exposed to it on that level when um, you were a little boy? It was my uncle. Mm -hmm. He married my mother's sister, so it's not like a blood okay. situation. Mm -hmm. um, and he sat me down at 14 and handed me a beer, which was the worst thing you could have done because my mother almost <laughs> killed him, and I really didn't like beer. Uh, so, but he sat down, gave me a beer, and he's like, what do you want to do with your life? And I'm like, play football for my country. And he was like, that's not going to happen. And I'm like, good. Like, okay. so 
So, and he's like, so, because he was in construction, I worked with him uh, during school holidays. I never had a job in high school, uh, but during all my breaks, we get four breaks a year, uh, three, two weeks, and then one, two month. And uh, I would work for him, and he would pay me as a laborer, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't have to work. Um, but so, he sat me down, he's like, what do you want to do after high school? And I was like, I don't know, I go to university, and he's like, with your grades? <laughs> I was like, well, all right, Greg's getting fucking stuck in right now. I was going to say. <laughs> um, so then it's, we sort of started talking, and he was like, would you want to go to university because your mom wants to? And I'm like, of course, it's natural progressive. Don't you just, you finish high school, then you go to university. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, not everyone goes to university. It's not like, it's not set in stone. And I was like, and that made me start thinking, and I'm really glad that... Well, that was nice that he opened that up for you because yeah. it could be a stigma otherwise. Right, and then I know that a lot of my friends that are bartenders now have got, what, $60,000 in debt because they went to school and they oh, never yeah. paid it off. Oh, yeah. and, I mean, Australia's a little different. If you can get into the HEC system, the government pays for it, and then you, when you start earning over a certain amount, they take, like, 2% of your paycheck until it's paid off. Okay. But um, he said, like, look, do you want to travel? And I was like, of course. I... I I just thought everyone wants to travel. I, I was Australian, that's what we did. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, okay, well, um, to give you some advice, people have to eat and they love to drink. So if you become a chef or you learn how to cook or you know how to make drinks, then... You will you, always be employed. You will get a job anyway. Wow. And that was like a light bulb moment for me. That is very wise advice. Yeah. It's absolutely true. Yeah. Did you have sort of the creative spark to do any of those things because cooking is an, an art of it and of itself um, I, cocktails all I was an athlete I was okay. a I was a good athlete growing up um, weirdly at like 11 12 I was 5 foot 8 oh wow yeah it's uh, like me I've been this size since I like was 13 I'm like skinnier than now but then through my teens I grew outwards not upwards mm. and I'm still 5 foot 8 Wow. Yeah. So you could, you could take somebody down then. I, you can ask Tricket about that next time. So. <laughs> so, so, you, so when that light bulb went on, then you thought, I should bartend. That's yeah, I mean, it, for me, it was... And, and was it... Yeah, what was it? What, what was it that made that the choice? I didn't, I didn't like the idea of backpacking. I liked the idea of moving somewhere for, for a year. Uh -huh. or for six months. I and didn't becoming like, part of the community sort of and thing. And learning the culture and not just being a part of like, oh yeah, I went to Thailand and I went to you know, one place for, for you know two hours and then jumped on a bus and went somewhere else for two days. And yeah. I was like, you can't really immerse yourself in something. So it's absolutely true. I just decided that I want to start traveling. So um, I was pretty sick in my last year of high school. I ended up in hospital for three months. I guess. Um, so I ended up repeating high school and going back with a bunch of kids that were like the year under yeah. me and I joined their class um, but I was already bartending at this stage so wow <laughs> yeah I mean I was, I was bartending in high school so splitting, <laughs> splitting football and and bartending and bartending on weekends yeah so I would get home at like 2 or 3 in the morning and I'd be on the ground at like 8 a.m. some days for sports for sports yeah wow wow and then like the coaches and the other like I, I think some of the players knew but a lot of the coaches didn't didn't know that why I wasn't out with the boys on the Fridays and Saturday nights until they all turned up at the restaurant I was working in one day. <laughs> they all sat down and like a round of beers ended up on their table and they're like, oh, I didn't even order this. And I'm like, yeah, double, I just thought I'd bring them over to you. I, mean, I know what you drink. And they're like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, why do you not see me out every Saturday night? Like, oh, yeah. Wow. So you've been bartending for that long. So so you've bartended in Australia, you've bartended in London, you're bartending in New York. Have you bartended in other countries as well since yeah, you did so do I, the traveling? I, I moved uh, to Dublin to live with my brother oh, um, nice. originally. Uh, that was 2009. I stayed there for 18-ish months. Um, in that time, uh, my girl flew out from Australia to visit me in Dublin. Yeah. Uh, I took her up to Belfast and the Merchant. Um, that's when I met Jack and Gary, and he basically hired me on the spot. Um, and Jack and Gary are Jack McGarry from, from Oh sorry. They were from and the Merchant Hotel in Belfast and now they own Dead Rabbit. Oh Trump. those guys. Yeah. Oh I didn't realize you worked with them. Yeah, so oh, that's wonderful. I moved up to Belfast uh, after my visa ran out uh, in Dublin mm -hmm. and I worked with Jack and Sean to open up uh, something called I think it was Bert's Jazz Bar, which okay. was part of the Merchant Hotel's extension. Okay. Um, and then they moved to New York. Uh, and they were like, 
like, you should come to New York. I'm like, I absolutely should. And they're like, we don't have a time frame. I was like, let me know. <laughs> never, it, that never came mm -hmm. of anything. Um, but once they'd left the company, I, I could already see people moving and shaking and yeah. pushing it in a direction that I didn't really think was the best. For you. Um, for me. Mm -hmm. I still had um, 18 months left uh, on my UK visa because Northern Ireland is part of the UK. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I never wanted to live in London. I never wanted to be that Australian bartender who <laughs> lived in London. And I, was like, oh, I don't want to be that stereotype. Um, but at that point, I, just, I still had 18 months left and I was like, well, if I want to get better, Jack said, you've got to move to London. Like, yeah. it's, it's the Mecca. If it's not New York, it's London. And I was yeah. like, oh, damn it. So. <laughs> London is pretty insane for cocktails. Yeah, so I, I went in, uh, I did it, I landed a job. At, uh, I was sitting in my favorite bar that's now not there anymore, it's called Lab. Um, Barbara Hibbison uh, and Mia bought that and turned it into Bar Swift recently, which I'm oh, yeah. into. Mm -hmm. um, which just won Which just won an award cocktail last night, bar. new cocktail bar. and. Nathan Shearer was here, wasn't he? With Nathan me? works at that bar, yeah. He works at that bar, and then I know yeah. I saw him, he did a presentation. Yeah, yeah about Instagram. gingers. Gingers, I know. Oh, ginger, sorry. It was it was about ginger, presented yeah. by a true ginger, so there you go. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, so that's Swift, okay. Yeah, so I was sitting in that I bar Swift, I uh, one night, and one girl taps me on the shoulder. She's just, just like, hey, I, I know you. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I don't think you do, darling. Like, I, like, I, I just... No, you, you don't know me. I'm, I'm not from around here. <laughs> and she's like, no, no, no. I know you. You're a bartender, aren't you? And I was like, oh, I was like, oh yeah, actually I am. She's like, oh, well, so am I. I'm like, all right, that's that's nice. And I was trying to just ignore this girl because she's hella drunk. Okay. And her. Six, You're afraid six, of where it's gonna go. Her six foot four Swedish boyfriend was standing very close behind oh, her. Oh dear. <laughs> um, and it turned into. She's like, well, where do you work? And I'm like, look, you've ever, ever been to Melbourne? She's like, no. I'm like. Ireland, she's like, no. I'm like, well then, sorry, darling, you just don't know me. Mm -hmm. She's like, well, where have you worked? And I'm like, well, I just finished up in the merchant. I've, I've moved here and I don't have a job yet. Mm -hmm. And her face drops, and she realized that uh, we that she she immediately pulled out her card and uh, oh, I'm paused. Hey, sorry. I'll send him back to you in a moment. Hi, Mo. Don't worry about it. Um, That's what editing's for. So, so, so you tell her, her that you were at Merchant. That I, was, that I just moved from, from uh, Belfast, working at Merchant, and I didn't have a job yet. And her face dropped, and she looked super scared, and then I had a car, and she's like, look, I have a spot. It's not your super cool kind of thing. It's a member's bar. It's 32 floors up. It's around the corner from here. I'd just really like it if you come check it out. I do have a, like a job available, and she kind of just hired me. Wow. Um, wow. But so, <laughs> I, I just thought she was handy. <laughs> she didn't really do anything about it. That's how opportunities arise. Uh, somehow, and it, so I'd been there like maybe two or three weeks, mm -hmm. and it was running up. October, November, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. um, and I was working in a little in a little pub that like part of your wage was that you got to live upstairs mm -hmm. in the pub. Um, my bed was twenty seven steps from the closest beer tap. Oh god. It was great, but I mean it, it was it was just a pub and like yeah. one of my one of my friends that I grew up playing football with uh, lived in work there and then got me a job there. Okay. Basically because I was sleeping on his couch. Yeah. And uh, they realized I was a bartender. They needed someone for two weeks. I took it. Um, somehow uh, this girl got my phone number and was like, look, you haven't come in yet. I don't, just, how about you just come up and have a drink on me? And I was like, all right, if she's hunting me out, like, it's yeah. the least I, can, least I can do is go up and have a drink. So yeah. go up and have a drink. She's like, why don't you come in on Friday, wear this, I'll put you behind the bar. If you're good enough, I'll give you a job. At this point, like, I'm looking at my bank balance, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> this isn't what I want to do, this isn't the best bar, but... Uh, but it'll get you in. I took it, and so normally, like, when you do a, a, like a trail or a, a trial shift somewhere, mm -hmm. you would think that they'd put you in on, like, a Tuesday or a, or a Sunday exactly. to see if you can make drinks. But they put you in on a Friday. You put you in on a Friday, and, like, you go up at Paramount, you went up, like, an elevator to the 32nd floor, come out of the elevator and you turn immediately right and there's this iconic 40 foot copper top bar that was wow. like designed by some weird architect that you what is it really called Paramount? Paramount it's not there but anymore. it's yeah but it was and um, it was a members only club as well at that point it was members only it ended up being open to the public later okay. um, 
but then and there's three stations and she put me on the station that, like you walk out of the elevator and then there's me so it was trial by fire basically pretty much and it, got, <laughs> it got pretty busy and uh as i was standing there and making drinks there's no jiggers like i could not find a jigger on my station oh, they no. didn't they, they were just they were just free pouring and i was like wow Shit. Like, you never free poured before because every route ever lived, free pouring is illegal. So, <laughs> thank thanks, you. Sweetheart. So, I sit there, uh, start making drinks. Halfway through the shift, she comes up behind me, she whispers my ear, she's like, Look, your classics are truly amazing, you're doing a really good job. Uh-huh. And I can't really hear her because I'm you're too busy. <laughs> I don't, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Um, so, it, it gets to like, I probably got in at five. It's like 10.30, things start to die off. It was a restaurant as well. I had like, mm-hmm. literally at that point in time, it was the highest bar. I had Paranoia views. Had like, wow. Um, in London. Right above Tottenham Court's Cor- oh, wow. Road Station. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, it's like, okay, finish up that round, come down, meet me in the office, pick up your bag. And I was like, oh, fuck. I, I should get this out. <laughs> so we sit down, and she's like, well, you're, you're amazing, you're great. If you want the opportunity to work here, the job the job is yours. She gave me a higher, I shouldn't be saying this, but she gave me a higher uh, tip out. So she bumped you up a little bit, yeah. She bumped up a couple points. Um, I think to Ooh, what the supervisor was, or just under the supervisor. Mm-hmm. Um, That's me. Yay, dinner time. Octopus and shrimp and grits. Perfect, thank you so much. There you go, guys. Thank you. We'll finish this and then pause and eat. <laughs> Um, or at least finish this part of the story. So I go, go down, sit in front of her, show her the job, I'll give a couple more points, and I'm like, look, and then uh, I, I gotta fucking tell you something. And she's like, fuck, you're illegal, aren't you? You don't have a visa. I'm like, no, 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 I have a visa. Everything's sorted that way. And she's like, well, what is it? I'm like, I've never free point before. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, what I was doing up there, never done it. And she's like, I'm gonna give you another point if you take this job right now. And I was like, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> I was like, all right, so um, we're closing in two weeks. And I was Surely like, happiness is going to close. Okay. And I was like, I put my hand up, but I'm like, yeah, excuse me. He's like, well, you don't have to raise your hand. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not the guy who's going to close Trail Happiness. Yeah. He's like, well, I just dropped another 80 grand into the business, and I'm broke, and I can't pay rent. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, okay. So, and it was like, the only way we can get through this is if for the next, if we can get to Carnival, which is in like three and a half. If we can get to what? Carnival. Carnival? Just like a... Like a big, so, like a party like a in West the West African Carnival party. But that it, happens like, in Notting Hill or in London? In, in Notting Hill. And it goes literally straight past the bar. Okay. So we would, we would, we would set up a bar outside, we would serve drinks outside as well, having a massive party inside. Mm-hmm. And it's like, if we can get to there, then maybe I can wing it. And he looks at me and he's like, you up for it? And I was like, I'm going to fucking try. Wow. So so Trailer Happiness was going to go away. Yeah. Uh, I fired everyone. Okay. Practically. Straight away. Uh, so then it was me. Every day. Uh, I had a bar back or two. I taught them how to serve. Uh, and weirdly, like, I looked at Jack Dobson one day and I was like, why, when you're at that table, why did you... And he's like, leaning that stool that way and sit down with them. I was like, yeah. And he's like, you told me to do exactly what you do, so that's what you do. And I was like, oh, shit, okay. <laughs> and then on the weekends, on Friday, Saturdays, I'd call up my buddies who were brand ambassadors or freelancers like myself, and I'd, I'd get them in. So we'd always have a full crew. I'd always have someone on the floor. If I, didn't, if I couldn't find someone on the floor, I was on the floor. I was doing probably... You know, 50, 60 hours a week in there for a bar that, for a bar that closes at midnight. That's, that's a lot. Yeah. Um, so it was going really well, and then we, we got it to Carnival, and we made a lot of money, and so I gave a toast, and then Sly was walking out, and I, like, I had to lock him out the door, and he got halfway across the street, and I yelled out, yelled out to him. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. I was like, no, no, Sly. He turned around, he's like, what? I was like, well, we made it. He's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, 
you told me to get to Carnival, right? Yeah. So the bar, like, we, we made it. We made it to Carnival. And he was like, yeah, yeah, we made it. He pointed at me and turned around and walked off. <laughs> he told me about a year later that, like, he cried all the way out. That night? Yeah. He was because... like, five blocks. He didn't think I could do it. He, didn't, he thought we were going to lose the bar. And then, you know, wow. we made it happen. So, so that happens. That we happens. made it to that. And then, how? We made it to Carnival, and Carnival just gave him the extra financial bump that he needed to continue yeah. and that was how many two years ago oh no that was like that was a, just like a year ago four and a half four and a half years ago yeah. okay so it was four and a half years ago so since then trailer happiness has definitely made a name for itself it's uh it's pulling it's pulling guns now um, yeah so i ended up hiring a actual gm not just a bartender who is going to run the bar yeah like I did. <laughs> um and so it's now making money, pulling punches, kicking goals. We won the Spirit Award last night for yeah. Best International High Volume Cocktail Bar. Wait, International High Volume Cocktail Bar. Yeah. Um, that happens. Uh, it's going really well. Like, we did a pop up at it um, in LA, where, which is where I met you. Oh, that's right. I met you in Los Angeles. Yeah. You did the pop up. Um, so, yeah, yeah, so they're out there. Good. Yeah, it's good. And so And currently, Eric is my boss on holiday. And that, so that's who you're working for now. Right. And there we go. And now you're at holiday. <laughs> nope, still not a holiday. Still not a holiday. Open oh up, opened up Lorenzo's. Uh, <laughs> it was supposed to be a summer bar, really beautiful. Uh, it was open for four and a half months. Um, at the end of the four and a half months, the investors just locked the doors, wouldn't let us in, <laughs> foreclosed on the business. Oh my god. And so I was once again royally fucked. Uh, so. Again, I'm tied to a business that isn't even isn't, isn't open, and I can't like mm-hmm. I can't have no way of making any money. So I go I go to Holiday, which I've been drinking at every day for like a year. Mm-hmm. I sit down in front of Danny Neff, and Danny knows I sit down and beer and whiskey every time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I down my whiskey, I neck my beer, put it down, look up at him. And he goes, "Okay." He does it again. Neck my whiskey, went to pick up my beer, and he's like, whoa, nope, let's go for a cigarette. And I'm like, Danny, you know what I'm smoking. Uh, like, let's go for a fucking cigarette. <laughs> we go outside. He looks, at, he looks at me, he's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I'm like, Lorenzo's closed. He's like, what do you mean it's closed? And he's like, I'm like, it's closed. Like, they locked the doors. Anyway. They what? They just, I was like, they locked the doors. I swear it's the closed. music got louder, like, yeah. last round. And so, uh, and he's like, fuck, what are you going to do? And I'm like, well, I'm going to get deported. You're going to what? Get deported? I said, well, I'm going to get deported. Oh, uh, yeah. And he's like, okay, you work here now. And I went, Danny, you don't you don't have any shifts. And he's like, I'm doing brunch at the moment, and it's really important to the owner that we do brunch. And I don't want to do brunch. I'm running the bar. I'd, I'd just come and do brunch. And I was like, not really a brunch bar trainer. He's like... Do you have a choice like, right now? <laughs> you're taking this job. I've been trying to get you in here since the first day we opened. You're taking this job. I was like, okay. That's how I ended up all. <laughs> wow. It's like you just keep tumbling into these things. Yeah. And I so mean, you've like been, when, you've when been... I tell people this story, they're just like, have you written any of this down? I'm like, no, I can't remember all this stuff. I've been drinking professionally for like 17 years now. So. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like, that is such a long history for such a young man. It's, that's wild. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so what kind of, I mean, since you've been doing this for so long, and obviously you started with just, you know, pulling out beers, and, but you were also talking about when you were at Paramount, how you were free pouring classic cocktails pretty much perfectly. Yeah, without right? even knowing how. Yeah, so so you have a knack for it. You recognize this at some point. So um, I have been to trailer, but not while you're there. I've been to holiday, and I was there, and you were there, and we like hung out and talked, and it was 4th of July, so I left and came back and had more fun. Um, what kind of uh, input do you have on the, in the cocktail menu there? I mean, because um, over the years you've learned so much. And right, yeah. I'm assuming you're quite creative with these things. Very. Um, and you have a, a nag for the tiki stuff. I do. Except, yes. can, we, can we tell the world about your pineapple? Sure, sure. The, so you will your pineapple because... People started calling me pineapple <laughs> while I was in London. Uh, it was around the Olympics, so that's going to be in 2012. 12, I think, yeah. Um, I've got dreadlocks, um, 
and it must have been around the time that I was starting to work a lot more at Trailer. So maybe a year later, well, people started saying you look like a pineapple. I remember Dean Cowan saying <laughs> it, and I remember uh, someone else. I'll get back to it now. And then they just started calling me pineapple. And then I started running a trailer, and I figured that they thought it was because I'm definitely allergic to pineapple. And I was running a tiki bar, or working so heavily around a tiki Pineapples. bar, yeah. that they thought it was ironic, and they started to be pineapple. As it turns out, I just looked like a pineapple. It really was. It had nothing to do with your allergy. No. Uh, it's just no the fact notably, that your dreadlocks are up on the top of your head. Yeah. One time, I was <laughs> like, I was doing like Fridays and Saturdays a trailer, or like Saturday nights, uh, and they have a, they had a day manager time named TBT, and it would have been a Thursday or something, and. The GM at the time called me up and said, hey, any chance you can come and open the bar on Thursday? I'm like, well, I've never done it, but I assume it's the exact opposite of closing the bar. He's like, yeah. It's like, okay. And he's like, we'll be there at like nine anyway. They just had like a day event that they had to do, but they needed the whole crew there. Yeah. So instead of closing the bar, they just called me up to work the first bit and work the rest of the night, but then they'd be around. So TBD is pissed because they're like, hey, this guy, William, is coming in to open the bar. Like, he works Saturday nights, but, you know, he'll, he'll be able to handle it. You just have to stay here while he's here. Yeah. So DVD's like, fuck, I'm missing out on this fucking great, awesome Tiki event because this fucking douchebag Williams come in. i got to babysit this little shit. <laughs> and so I walk down the stairs, and uh, he looks at me, and he's like, hey, what are you doing here? And we hug, and I, and I shake his hand. It's cool. We chat. And I put my back down, and I walk behind the bar, and he's like... What, what, are you, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> you can work here. I, I work here. It's like, uh, well, what, I'm like, they call me up to open the bar, and I'm normally here on Saturday nights. And it's like, wait, your name's William? <laughs> and I'm like, because they've just been calling you pineapple for just been calling me pineapple for forever. <laughs> and so, and I'm like, yeah, and it's like, Oh, fucking right, all right. Packs up his laptop, <laughs> closes everything down, puts everything in his bag. He's like, sweet, I'll see you later. Yeah, and he's Runs good. out, goes to the event, has a fucking great time. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so, when you were there, I mean, when did you start having input on menus? Uh, early. Early? Yeah. People just realized that you kind of had a knack for combos. Actually, when, when I was combos. at Paramount, um, the menu was probably 40, 35, 40-ish. Um, and when Amanda did the next menu... She was like, look, I want all of your input. Oh, wow. Okay. So there was Amanda, who was a bar manager, but she was bartending as well at the time. Uh, you toast babies? Okay. I'm doing good. Yeah? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, thank you. You're um, welcome. Actually, could I have a shot? No. <laughs> yeah. What you want, baby? Uh, just Stiggins. Stiggins? How about for you, baby? I'm fine. Thank all right. you. You got it, honey. So it was Amanda, myself, the supervisor, and two other bartenders. Uh, and they all ended up with one drink each on the menu. Um, I ended up having like nine. <laughs> and, nice. And I did the rest. Nice. Uh, and from then on, it was just, I would always have in order. The, the way I like to work is when you're in a bar that everyone creates drinks and you put them together and then you figure out how to do it. Yeah. Um, I've designed menus for parties and bars. I, can, I consulted for uh, ladies and gentlemen when I opened in London um, and did their entire first menu and trained their staff and did train them how to make syrups and everything. Yeah. Um, so it's, part, it's common for me to, to have a high level of input. At holiday, on the mixtape menu, I had, I had input on that. Um, with the current menu that we're releasing now, I can't tell you about, but I had, <laughs> a, I had almost zero uh, input. But that's because I spent so much time in Australia this year. Okay. So I sort of, I wiped my hands and said, look, I, I know I have been helping you with this, but I've, but you know, I've got to do it with my best With where you really are, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, I met you at a pop-up in Los Angeles. It was a tiki pop-up for Trailer Happiness. But I can't even remember if we said this during the course of this conversation. But then, it just so happened that a couple weeks later, I was in New York and went to Holiday Cocktail Lounge, and there you were, because you're very distinctive because you're pineapple. And so I sat down and looked at the menu, and the menu was a mixtape, and that made me really, really happy. And that's when I was like, I need to talk to you guys about music and booze, because obviously you appreciate them both. So since we've talked plenty about booze, I need to talk about your music. <laughs> now, you didn't, you've never played in a band or anything like that. Incorrect. Incorrect? Ooh. 
the learning continues. All right. So I just, how did you, did you have time? You were an athlete. You were bartending. You were like 12 years old and doing all of these things. I'm sorry. I studied music in. You high studied school. music as well. In high school, yeah. So what so was high your, school in Australia? We don't, we don't have middle school, mm-hmm. so we have yeah. what we call primary and secondary. Yes. So it like you go to primary school from when you're like six to like twelve. And then you go from high school from 12 to 18. So uh, at 12, I started. My brother already played bass, um, and so naturally there was one in the house already. So okay. my mom asked if I wanted to, if I wanted to take lessons, uh, and the, the lessons were in the school. So it meant that if she was paying for lessons, I would get time off school to go and to a music lesson and play bass. Oh, okay. I think the reason I liked music and. Uh, sports so much is because I got so much time off school <laughs> outside of high school. I still. All right, then. Well, since you played bass, let me ask you if you have a favorite bass player. Because um, you must have paid attention to some of those bass players. Yeah, I mean, I have a favorite band. His style is not my favorite style, but the band is my favorite band. So. What is that band? Uh, it's called Hot Water Music. I'm sorry? Hot Water Music. Oh, Hot Water Music? music? Yeah, oh, I know Hot Water Gainesville. Music. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I've been going to their show since I was 16. Yeah. Uh, Chuck and Chris know me by name now. Oh, really? Yeah, Chuck was out. Wait, do they know you as William or do they know you as Pineapple? They know me as William. Okay. Yeah. Because um, they've known me for so long that uh, before that I was Pineapple. Before you were Pineapple. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Um, so, Chuck was out in New York a couple of weeks ago, actually just after I got back from LA, I think. Mm-hmm. No, when I got back from Australia, but before I went to LA. LA. Okay. <laughs> he did a couple of shows, so I went and hung out with him for a couple of days, and then there. They're in, I think it's in October, they're doing Boston on a Friday night, Brooklyn on a Saturday night, and Philly on a Sunday night. And, and you're gonna, going to all of I'm them? I'm going to go to all three, yeah. So that's one of your band. That is your band? It's, yeah. That's uh, great that that's your band, and you've met them, and you all get along. It didn't, there was no, um, yeah. I mean, no I, ruination. I know Chris and hero Chuck worship. quite well, mm-hmm. uh, the bass player, um, I don't know so well, and the drummer, I don't really know. He's I sort know. of around, yeah. but he's like the, I don't think they drink as much as I do, so I think that's why I get along with Chris and Chuck more. But, uh, but yeah, so that, that's my favorite band. Um. Come on, come on. Gotta trust in something strong. Gotta keep them wheels on turning. Die with the rest and wrong. Hang on, hang on Gonna be that win for long Yeah, eat that dust and savor Road less traveled on Yeah, oh I only got one shot to follow black tar day By the time we're through this machine We'll know one day We'll be shouting He didn't want the holiday spirit to die. Okay. Because Stefan was a big Polish dude who would, you know, put music on the jukebox and just start singing basically karaoke by himself. <laughs> he's, a, he's a much bigger character than I'll ever be. But uh, <laughs> I want to rob, didn't want the bar to just fall away or to become a Starbucks or yeah, yeah. or to become something else. He wanted he something wanted with it, identity that was he wanted to he wants part holiday, of the community still. Yeah, he wants holiday cocktail lounge, the holiday cocktail lounge in a hundred years. Okay. He wants he wants his kids to, to own it to later. Okay. So it's it's really it's a really refreshing to know that someone with that kind of money actually spending it in a way and it, I mean it is a business. They're using their money for good basically. It's a business and we, we like we do everything, everything's above board. Yeah. We do make money. But at the end of the day he doesn't want it just to be some shitty yeah. dive but another shitty bar these yeah. yeah. So so Michael Neff's uh, stance on it was it was always gonna be heavily music first. We had the Well that was that neighborhood. That yeah. neighborhood I mean there was so years. much music there for I mean, decades. Ma- Madonna's song, the Holiday, she wrote about the barn. Oh, did she really? Yeah. Shut um, up. I never knew that. Seriously? The Dancing Souls, they have a song called Holiday Cocktail Lounge. And the opening line is something along the lines of, uh, happy hours next door, but I'm, I'm going to stay here and get a song with my Budweiser or something like that. <laughs> I never knew that. I'm going to have yeah. to listen to that one. I 
happy hours next door, but you have to brave the downpour. I'm staying here where I can get a song. Free with my drink to smooth things along. The bartender, he looks kind of soft, but he always knows what's going down. It's all how you carry yourself here at the holiday cocktail. Uh, and obviously being on St. Mark's, there's a lot of writers and artists that have, that have hung I think out B there. Bukowski had his own stool. Bukowski has had a stool like everywhere. So, I mean, I believe you, but Bukowski has had a stool yeah, everywhere. There, there's, there's another couple. Joe, uh, Joe Donahue knows. Yeah. He remembers that sort of stuff because he studied music yeah. uh, in college. Um, but there, and there's a bunch of other bands that were there a lot. I think, I mean, the Ramon, Ramones drank everywhere. Yeah. But I have regulars that come in and they're like, and that drank with the, them. John, John, he's like, yeah, Johnny used to borrow 50 bucks off me and tell him he's good for it. And then as soon as he gets 50 bucks, walks over to the payphone because in the 90s no one had cell phones. Yeah. So the phone booth was known as just your, your, uh, your way to get onto your dealer. <laughs> um, and there was often a line at the phone booth while there wasn't a line at the bar. But. I mean, so yeah, so we we created a holiday in a way that we wanted it to be welcoming and inviting and make it feel like your living room and a little dive even though you can get a great drink and then but the music is going to be true to what the roots of the whole venue and the whole experience. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah. That's really great. I mean, I walked in there and I just it felt really cozy and fun, and I really enjoyed myself there. And if I lived in that neighborhood, it was a place I would hang out. Yeah. I actually was telling someone I have this. I have a vision of what my bar would be where I'd have a bar, but I don't, and it, to me it's not difficult. I always call it a cocktail dive because it's dive bar, but it's a little cleaner than that. And there's, you know, good music and maybe a, a touch of a higher level of booze behind the, behind the bar yeah. than you're used to at a dive bar. So you can go in and have a great drink made for you, or you can order a Bud Light. And either way is totally fine. Well, yeah, we don't have Bud Light. We don't have any light. <laughs> but you know really what good. I mean. It's like, I mean, if, for if me, someone that's asks me what, what holiday is, I'm like, look, it's a dive bar. I mean, it, to not classify it as anything, it's a bar where you can come and drink beer and whiskey, have a great conversation with someone, and listen to some really fucking rocking tunes. Yeah. Or you can order a Manhattan or any one of the drinks off our menu, and yeah. they're world class cocktails. Yes, and that they're is. They're like hotel class where people are like really fiddly diddly about the way that they're gonna sit their garbage down. I'm gonna pick up the ice with my hands. I'm gonna, shake fucking, <laughs> I'm gonna shake everything really fucking hard. It's gonna come to you, but it's gonna be one of the better drinks in the city mm -hmm. and if not the world but see and that's the thing is that that is a, I went in there and I'm like well, this is the bar that I want this is the bar because I walked in there didn't know anyone was sitting next oh and you guys on the back of your menu you sell inflatable husbands yes we have, <laughs> we have, we have a store downstairs and we keep uh, red lipstick and uh and condoms that are cocktail flavored. And, and, and also, are, is there like like a bag of chips? Yeah, well, I mean, they're all kinds our, of our order uh, still owns a snack food company called yeah. uh, Vegan Rob, so we have okay. all that stuff falling around the bar. But I remember there were things, it was like like le like mints, besides the sex things. There Tooth were toothbrushes, toothpaste, uh, I think there's handcuffs down there. Some <laughs> reason. Um, I do remember that you guys were out of wigs when I was there. We were out there. of wigs, but it was. But it had it been, been great pride, yeah. exactly, so I completely understand why you were out of breaks. But you know, something like that, it's irreverent and it's fun. Yes. And, and, at the, and you guys back it up. So I remember <laughs> sitting there just feeling like, this is exactly the bar that I want. It's not pretentious, it's just, <laughs> you know, it's just enough of a dive, but I could order a fantastic cocktail here if I want to, or if I got a shot of beer and everybody's going to even blink. No, I mean, and, I, I religiously drink shots of beers in that yeah, place. Yeah, right. I, mean, I can't remember the last time I had a cocktail, to be honest. I probably had a Manhattan at some point in the last year, but <laughs> I generally go to other bars to drink cocktails. To drink cocktails. Things, yeah. And I remember that the other people who were sitting there, or I remember there was a woman who had come in, and I think it was, I think someone had passed away in your family. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine had very recently passed away. She had had someone very recently pass away, and then she had a friend with her, and all of us were like, well, I think we all need shots then. And 
that yeah, uh, the whole bar did shots. The whole bar did shots because we all realized it's been kind of a crappy week for some of us. Yeah. We should bond on this, do a shot, and we we're like, let's let's move forward. And that doesn't happen in just any bar. Right. You know, just the fact that we were all strangers. Yeah. And, and I mean, the the other thing about uh, holiday is that it's a semicircle bar. It's in the yes. middle of the room. So it literally, I mean, it forces everyone to. Yeah, if you if you go with like the three head bartenders, I guess you can call them. Trickett's like the manager, Eric Trickett, Eastern LA, uh, Drew Donahue is from Jersey, and myself. Uh, all played in bands. Trickett played in many bands in LA. Uh, Joe Donahue studied music. So for us, it's literally like being on stage. Yeah. Because you can see everything. Yeah. Like if you're sitting at the bar, you can see everyone else sitting at the bar and exactly what both the bartenders are doing at all times. There is no hiding, there is no corners. So. Yeah. And so everyone, since everyone kind of has a music side to them as well. Everyone has a background music. So, okay, give me, I've asked people this, and if you can't think of something right off the bat, that's fine. I'll give you an option. Um, I would like a pairing. Mm -hmm. Give me a drink and a song, or a drink and a band. Or, tell me what you go home and listen and relax to and drink. Okay. I mean, I can tell you what I listen to on the train at five in the morning when I'm going, when you're home, going home on the subway. And, I, what would, and if you were drinking, what would it be? You know, I want I, to prepare I, you. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't really drink at home. Okay. You know what? I don't either. It's it's one of those things I that drinking is a professional thing for me. So if I'm out, I drink. If I'm at home, I might have a beer. I'll I have have if a I have sharing. people over, yeah. and then I'll make cocktails. But I don't drink at home myself. So I understand that. So let's just go. So you're wind down when you come home. We've got a whole playlist my, for no, all the on, train. on my Spotify. <laughs> there's a uh, jump back in. So the last song, the last album I played. Oh, and I'm. I specifically listen to albums. I try not to listen to playlists. All my playlists are for work. Oh, okay. Um, well, that's great. That's because great. I realized that like artists go through so much to write, you know, ten to twelve songs and put them in order. And that's more of an experience for me to listen to it in that's order, all the, like all the way through. And, so, and my, I, have, I have one musician friend in particular who definitely curates his albums to be a one through twelve experience. Of course, and I mean, why wouldn't you? That's that's yeah. what an album is. Yeah. And so I think playlists are kind of cheating. They're like all uppers, no downers. Yeah. But probably one of my favorite albums of all time is uh, Jimmy Eat World, uh, Bleed America. Oh yeah. Okay. And so often, uh, Trickett and I will look at each other when we're working together. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna take another daiquiri. Actually, no. Can I just... Can I... Can I get a zombie? To what? Can I get a zombie? He's going for a zombie. Yeah! Let's do this thing. <laughs> right. I might nibble on your zombie. Uh, and Trickett will look at me or I'll look at Trickett and we'll just be like, you wanna get loud? Don't wait around like 10.30 and the bar's full of NYU students and they're all having a good time and we're listening to like some Yacht Rock or something <laughs> and then we just put on Bleed America start yeah. to finish and turn it up just that little bit too loud Yeah. and you'd be surprised at how many kids that are like you know 22, 24 that start no, just like thing. rocking out and it, it, it puts us in a really good mood Yeah. which obviously is going to put our guests in an even better mood absolutely, so. absolutely and I remember we play the slow ones we play the fast ones on that but Getting back to like my Spotify at the moment is jump back, <laughs> jump back in is uh, Bayside by Bayside, um, Live in Chicago by Hot Water Music, uh, Hold Fast by Jay's Best Friday, which you wouldn't know. They're, You're so rock and roll. They're one of my buddies from high school. They released this album and one before that, uh, and they have so they're not together anymore. Fighting. Okay. Day, days worth fighting. Oh, days worth, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Hawthorne Heights, The Signs in Black and White. Uh, Rise Against, uh, Song Song of the Cowder Culture. Um, Echolalia is like my summer jammy vibes from something like something with Kate. Okay. Um, then there's another hot water music called No Division. Uh, Rise Against just re released a new album yep. called Wolves. Uh, oh, then there's my Hour of Power. There's Hour of Power. Which I was probably, there, yeah. probably playing while I was cleaning my house or something. <laughs> uh, and then there is New, against new me. Wave by Against Me. Against me. So, Wonderful. That's like Our the last seven albums I've listened to or something so like that. so rock and roll. I love it. I, love I mean, it. I, didn't, I never tried to be, but. Uh, you know, it just kind of happens. You like yeah. what you like. But we know that you also like disco, so it's not as if. Uh, Disco's like my, my jammy jams. Yeah, that's, totally. that's my rock it out sort of. <laughs> let's, get, let's get my boogie on. <laughs> All right, well, I think we've got a lot out of you in terms of drinking and music, and I love it. I love it very much. So if anyone hasn't picked up already, if you're in New York, go to the Holiday Cocktail Lounge. It's a party in there. But it's like, 
it's the kind of party it should be. It's an East Village rock and roll. Yeah, I mean, like, you know. I've, I've been giving a little bit of shit uh, about the music I play. And I mean, I, I typically close Mondays and Tuesdays. I'm always going to be there. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people are like, well, we want, you know, we want to hear Toto by Africa. And I'm like, well, then go to every other bar. Exactly, Just right? Just go to every other bar. Yeah. Their closing songs are going to be that. So <laughs> I do a little bit differently. I have a lot of regulars that come in, like, religiously. I have guys that come in Mondays. I have religiously yeah. guys who come in Tuesdays. And I work Thursday nights as well. Yeah. I have, like, two or three restaurants that all meet up at theirs and then come to mine. Like, well, you know, considering what you said is, you know, the owner's directive, more or less, is to want to want to properly represent the history of the, of the village yeah. and and maintain that and, and modernize it so that it's, you know, a, a lot of that is being lost out there. You know, there's still, yeah. like, there's still... Uh, Trash and Vaudeville's gone now, isn't it? Did that go away? I Trash and Vaudeville. I think it's still there. It was long-time punk rock, you know, clothing place. Weirdly, the, the night I met you, I was outside. Um, some dude came up to me and was like, hey, man, do you know... It was July 4th. And I was like, do you know yeah. of any, anywhere in the East Village I can listen to, like, a rock band right now? Like a live rock like band? Like a live rock band. And I was like, uh... uh no. On July 4th? He was like, yeah. I'm like, uh... Well, I'm, uh, oh. <laughs> and I literally couldn't think of one. Yeah. I was like, fuck, what, ha- what the fuck happened to this place? Right, yeah. So, and it used to be teaming with, I mean, rock and roll on the street. That's what St. Mark's was. Like, yeah, exactly. I mean, St. Mark's is only three blocks long, but. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah, so I think you guys definitely are keeping that spirit alive, and it's wonderful. So, anyone who hasn't been to Holiday Cocktail Lounge, go. And if you go to London, you can visit his alma mater. Many of your alma maters. Well, how many are still left? I mean, Trailer Happiness is still there. Trailer's going to be there for a while. Trailer's going to uh, survive. Blue, Blue Clay's there. Um, that's a really good one in short. I'm sorry, Kalu Clay? Kalu Clay, Oh, you were yeah. Kalu Clay as well? Yeah, oh, I, I didn't was know there. that. Somehow that didn't get mentioned in the 40-minute narrative. Yeah, well, <laughs> that, that was one of the freelance things. Okay. It's, it's, it's more that I'm family there rather yes. than, than I work there. Yes, yes. Um, some of the guys that Kalu Clay's a good I worked one. with at Kalu are still some of my best friends today. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, um, so did you know Nathan at Cool Play then? I met sure Nathan when I was working for JJ at uh, LCC Bridge Street. Oh my goodness. I went in there, um, I think, honestly, I was just bar back in one night for because JJ called me up and was like, look, you're not going to want to do this, but I need a favor. Yeah. I went in, I bar backed. I'm not a bar back. I've never been a bar back, but I, I did it anyway. Um, and uh, Nathan was in there and he was cutting his own ice. Last call, you want to do anything else? I'm or just thank you. I'll, I'll take another shot. Nope. <laughs> you got it. What do you want this time? What, whatever you want. So what? Whatever, whatever you, you want. I can't. You can't? Yeah, not at work. All right. Uh, some form of rum. Some form of rum. Yeah. Whatever you would have if you could. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I love bars. <laughs> uh, yeah, Nathan was cutting his own ice, and he was a character, and I could tell he was maybe nineteen or twenty. Okay, okay. Uh, baby situation. You knew he was gonna go far. Yeah, and uh, I can't. I, I can't remember if I pushed him in the way of Puy Clay or whether he asked me if it was a good idea, and I said it was the best idea, and uh, he ended up working there, and that's when he sort of started really launching. doing his thing. Yeah. So in the states, people can find you at happiness. I'm sorry, happiness. Happiness is the England. Happiness. Is, there's a couple happinesses out there. You are now Holiday Cocktail Lounge. Holiday New Cocktail York, Lounge. East Village. I want to be there for the next. Well, I've been there a year. And you a half, want to be there so a little while. At least. I want to be there ten years total. Do you want to be there ten years? Yeah. Okay. All, I will all, the, great, all the great bartenders that have ever like that I look up to, I've had long stints in good bars. And I want. And a you long feel like stint. this is the one. Because You're feeling I've been that moving around to because this. I had to for so yeah. long. Yeah. I feel that the fit for me there is perfect. It's my favorite bar. I drank there every day for a year before I started working there. Yeah. Um, you love the music. I love the music. I love the vibe. I love the fact that it's so relaxed, but you can get a decent drink. You want, you want a death in the afternoon? I'm gonna make you want to take So. <laughs> You want to be in a shop? That's perfectly fine by me. I'm, not, I'm definitely not offended if you order a vodka drink. Right? <laughs> perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Thank you so much, Pineapple. You're very for welcome. Talking to us, it's you wonderful. I'm gonna get a playlist from you later. You know that, right? Yeah, no problem. Oh yeah. I'm yeah. Uh, I think my handle on Spotify is. Yeah. Tell drinks. people. Um. How do you want? How do you want people to find you? Uh, do you do the social media thing? Social media. I only do Facebook, okay. uh, and that's under William Pineapple. Okay. 
but I don't for Spotify, add, yeah. you just said Spotify. On, on is Facebook, what? I don't add everyone. So yeah, if you could send me a message and tell me to add you that you heard off, off this podcast, that'd be yeah. perfect. Yeah. Um, and then Spotify is under my LLC, so I think it's it's William Drinks. Is, William Drinks is my profile. Yeah, William Drinks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So people can find that there, but I'm gonna get one of your playlists anyway to sure. to show people with this. And I think we're good. Look, look how long we went. Hour and 17 minutes. Hour and 17 minutes. We'll see what this edit, edit, edits edit, down edit. to. <laughs> I have to cut out some of the chatting we did with people not involved in the interview. But thank you so Absolutely. much. I really Absolutely appreciate perfect. it. My pleasure. Right. Now So there you have it, one epic conversation with William Pineapple about all the various bars he's worked in and make sure that if you are ever in the East Village of New York City, that you go to the Holiday Cocktail Lounge and visit him there. It's a really fabulous place, one of my ideal kinds of bars. And uh, check out his Spotify. He gave you all the info. And it's William Pineapple on Instagram and William Drinks on Spotify. We've also got a Spotify playlist ready for you to go check out. Just Go to the uh, Moherms Facebook page and you can find all the info there. Thanks so much for listening.